What's up, everybody, and welcome to the No BS Real Estate Show, a podcast that gives you an inside look on how to make smart financial decisions while adding value to your life. I'm Matty Miller with ERA Real Estate, alongside my co-host and real estate investor extraordinaire, Ryan Robbins. Whether you're a longtime investor or a first-time buyer, join us as we dig through the everyday bullshit of real estate. Ryan Robbins, how are you, sir? Matty Miller, it's good to see you. Uh, I am Matty Miller. This is my co-host and partner in crime, Ryan Robbins. Um, this is the No BS Real Estate Show, and thanks for joining us, guys. We got some uh, good stuff. Uh, this is episode one, so we're excited to get uh, started. It's it's podcast Wednesday, and uh, we're excited to be here. So I'm smiling on my face. I'm looking at the camera. I'm even going to wave, um, and we're going to have a good time here. So talking about... First time buyers and what those people should look out for and what should they should be concerned about, you know, as they're going through that process. So I actually have a blog post that we're going to look at a little bit um, off the MattySales dot com, uh, which is my sales website. Which I just did a plug there. You see what happened? I just plugged. Myself. Don't check it out. Yeah, let's say I just plugged myself. It's, um, it's just like a don't touch the wet paint, right? Maybe. That's don't touch the wet paint. Yeah, don't plug yourself. I just did. We're going to plug ourselves at the ends, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so we're going to go through a lot of that stuff for first time home buyers, pre approvals. Title insurance, what to know, what not to know, what to look for when you're actually narrowing down your search, um, you know, from a budgeting aspect and all that fun stuff. But first, we bring you the real estate sensei. Today's real estate sensei quote of the week is, owning a home is a keystone of wealth, both financial affluence and emotional security. I think that sounds like BS, doesn't it though? No, actually, honestly, owning a home, owning your primary home is probably overrated. Owning rental property in passive income is probably underrated. Um, not enough people do that to create um, a financial solvency for their life. So, um, yeah, the real estate sensei says owning a home is a keystone of wealth, both a financial aff- affluence and emotional security. I can't even talk this morning. It's all right. I struggle. Uh, I struggle with things. It's Wednesday. We're halfway through the week. They call me special sometimes. Hey. It happens. You're special. You're special I mean, to me. Uh, well, I'm special. So. All right. That's the name, <laughs> sure. All right. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, first time home buyers. Uh, first thing we want to start off with is what do we want to pay attention to when we're, if we got a first time home buyer? Actually, let's lead it off with your story. Um, we got a first time home buyer story for you. And Ryan's going to explain this too. This is actually a client of his that he's been working with, uh, what was you work, probably a year ago, somewhere in there you worked with him? Yeah. So, this is a funny story. Yeah. Like anything else, I guess, like a lot of, you know, People that are currently renting, you know, people think that, you know, they're stuck renting, you know, they can't afford a home. Well, nine times out of 10, you can actually potentially pay the same price you're paying to rent or, or less to own a property. So that being said, you know, first thing you're going to do is want to speak to a lender and see what your actual, you know, approval rate could be. What the hell is a lender? What is a lender? Well, a lender is somebody who's working directly to get you funded. Oh, they want to give you money. They want to give you money. Really? Yeah. What do they want to do in return? They want nothing from you, Matt. So That's essentially this process, yeah, they true. want nothing. They want to give you the money and guess you don't even have to pay it back. They're just going to give it to you. That's amazing. <laughs> that actually, oh man. That I know a so guy great. who knows a guy. You know a guy who knows a guy? Is he part of the mob? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hook <laughs> you up. So for, later, for that, ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there listening, you should call Nine zero four five seven four one nine five eight. Right now, that's my cell phone. He's got a guy to get a guy to. They can give you free money. We're gonna hook um, you up. So call me right now. I will get you hooked up. Um, actually, don't call me. That's not true. He's completely lying. So is that your number? Is that from that's actually number? my cell phone number? He just, yeah, he just dropped it. All right, everybody, call that. My number is posted all over the internet. Why do I give a crap? spam away? Yeah. So don't just don't text me like nudes or anything. That'd be weird. Yeah. So or, that'll be strange. Can five I say in the that morning. on a real estate you know, podcast? Why not? Yeah. Whatever. Um. So anyway, don't text me dirty pictures of people. I'll be very upset if you do, and my better half will be really confused on what's going on. <laughs> um, so, yeah. And, and if you're a friend of mine and you hear this, you're probably going to, so I'll just go ahead and probably warn her that that's going to happen. Um, anyway, down the rabbit hole we go, and back to Off. lenders. And ultimately, they're going to charge you interest um, on your loan is what I was trying to get at with there. Like, oh, it's free money. They're going to give you money. 
Uh, what's a lender? Uh, well, a lender is somebody, obviously a bank or some kind of financial institution that is going to lend you money in exchange for interest that they're going to earn back over the course of that loan. Typically in this day and age, we're 30 years or 15 years. Um, you can really do 20 years, 25. You can kind of do whatever you want with the amortization schedule. But that being said, um, so we're going to, we're going to get with the lender. Uh, we're going to figure out what we can, what we can afford. And they're going to give us a pre-approval pre-approval letter. That's what we're, that's what we need. And I call that your golden ticket. So you get that pre-approval and that's essentially your ticket to go shopping. So that being said, you get to take a day off and go to the mall. Yes. Except instead except, of the mall, you get to drive around multiple subdivisions over and over again or neighborhoods, depending on what your style is and find a house that suits you and your family. There you go. So uh, pre-approval letter. Ultimately, what they're going to do is they're going to give you a number that based on your income and what you have um, going on in your current life, your income, your debt ratio, things like that. Um, your credit score. Yeah, credit score, obviously, one of the previous ones. So it's really, it's a, it's a lot of factors. Um, they're going to give you, you know, you're approved up to $350,000. That does not mean go spend $350,000. That doesn't mean go look at every house from $348,000 to $352,000. But Matt, I want to spend all of it. <laughs> you want to spend every bit of yes, it. Yes, I just uh, got a new credit card and I want to max it out. Okay, well, if you want to do that, you can do that. Um, so th- that brings us to our next point, which is budgeting. Um, so keyword budgeting. Um, I myself have struggled with that in my life, and I will be not afraid to admit that. Um, but budgeting, set up a budget, so set up something that's comfortable for you. Um, Ryan, I know you've gone through gone through some of this stuff with with your personal personal stuff. And what's what's the what's the one key or one uh, let's say the most important tip when it comes to budgeting that you can figure? Well, a lender is going to look at it from the sense of what your you know, what your gross income is versus what your liabilities are. So that's going to, you know, factor everything from a car payment to a credit card um, down to, again, your mortgage has to be factored into there. So like anything else, when it comes to a personal budget versus a budget on a property, you don't want to overexpend yourself in any sense. And that's where, you know, Find Speaking, something that's comfortable for you. Yeah, exactly. And a lender's yeah. gonna gonna keep you within your range as well. They're not gonna let you run wild. And again, if you wanna go spend, you know, they half a million to, dollars and you can't in, spend it, well, in two thousand four, they're not they gonna let you give run it to wild. you. They let you get a little, yeah, little a little more wild. They're gonna let crazy. you get today. They let they let the high school kids party in two thousand four. But that's what happened. And people paid and then, for it. And then people paid for it big time. So um, find something that's uh, mo- most of your pre approval letters are pretty pretty close these days there's no stated income anymore like there used to be where you'd be able to walk into a bank and say oh i make x amount of money mm-hmm. great here's a letter that says you can buy a house for three hundred ninety five thousand dollars when you're making fourteen dollars <laughs> an hour at a pizza place and you're going and you and you don't even own a car um so no it's going to be entirely different nowadays so which is good and hopefully that's going to balance the market out and avoid what we call the great crash of 2008 um, or whatever year it was, 2008, mostly. It's when most of it happened. We really hit rock away, bottom. Yeah. It's like 2010. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so finding a pre-approval letter. Um, how do you find, or getting a pre-approval letter, um, how do you find a lender? Well, the real the real easy answer is ask your realtor. Yeah. Um, realtors have tons and tons of relationships with all kinds of lenders. Um, I, myself, I use about four different people. Um, I have ones that I go to for... Um, programs such as first-time buyer programs, like you got the H2H program, the Head Start to Home. Um, there's lift programs that in here in Jacksonville, which is a Duval lift um, that we've used. I've had a couple clients use. Um, I have more of your higher-end income, your conventional guys that I use, and they're more conventional using those, and they don't use the assistance. So I'll refer business to different people um, depending on the client that I'm working with. Um, so here in Florida, we also have the Florida bond, which is again, another yep, first time buyer program. Florida so they'll actually assist you in your down payments. There's, uh, two or three K's. So yep. if you want to buy a property that needs a little bit of work, they can actually factor in your construction costs. Correct. So that's yep. another two unique or program. Are like we could get, we could go on a whole episode on uh, what to do and how to do a two or three K yep. loan. And like that'll, that may be a whole episode. So write that down one in the notes as we're starting this thing and we'll, we'll get to a two or three K and. And I have not done one myself. Have you done that? I've, I I've I've know I into a one. client that did one. I've looked into one. They're, they sound great on the surface. Not that they're not a great. Lot of tape but involved. yeah, it's not as easy as, hey, I want to spend X amount of dollars and fix up this property. Can I go do it? 
Yeah, you're yeah. gonna have to jump through some hoops. Yeah, um, yep. There's totally a lot of paperwork understand. involved. It's not just here's your money and, and go have fun. So there's a lot more structure behind that. But like anything else, you're still getting your funding for your entire project. So they're gonna make sure they have their hands on everything that's going on. For sure, for sure. All right, so we've gotten two of the biggest steps. Obviously, the most important step is is find a realtor. Um, and I'll stay short on that because we're both agents here, obviously. But I think the biggest thing when it comes to finding a realtor is most importantly just find somebody you trust. Um, I'll be the first one to say there's a lot of – I don't want to make fun at our own industry, but there's a lot of people that look at realtors as used car salesmen. Um, and I think that the one thing that – really resonates with people is when you can just be truthful to who you are as a person and say, Hey, do what's right for the client. And that's all they want to care about. And there are so many agents out there who are going to sit there and say, Oh, well, I just want to sell your property. I want to sell your property. I don't really care if it's for the highest, it's for the best. Or if I want to sell you a property, maybe that property might not be good for them. Yeah. Um, and you're the one that agent has to be the one to, to point them down the right road with, getting them set up with a home inspection and having that home inspection looked over thoroughly because that first time buyer, they don't know what the hell they're looking at. Okay. You have to help them. And if, and if you don't trust that agent to have your back when it comes to things, you're going to be in it. You're, you're going to be in deep shit. And, and that's when it, when it comes to, you know, an agent as a buyer, keep in mind, you're not paying for the services of an agent. So it's free for you to work with any agent. And to that sense, don't just pick anybody. You can shop agents like you can shop, Lenders, like you can shop, you know, shop anything, anything. Yeah, exactly. So to that sense, find an agent that's been around. Not that there's anything wrong with a newer agent, um, but it's very easy to essentially hang your hat and wave a, you know, big franchise sign behind you and, you know, show the appearance that you know what you're doing. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes newer agents can be great for people because they may have been somebody that's maybe it might be a friend of yours. Like myself, when I first got in the business, I just came from, I came from the banking industry. So I just basically spun it to a different side of what I was already doing. I was just on the other side of it. Yep. So it's not that I didn't know what I was doing. I was just working on a different side of it, um, coming from the banking industry and going, Hey, okay, well they're like, Oh, well you're selling houses now. Like, well, yeah, I used to re- I used to do mortgages. So now I'm just flipping it around. Goes hand in hand. Yeah. Um, so you understand the things and I was a newer agent and trying to get, you know, get people to understand that and use me was difficult at first, but now I start to gain, gain some traction. So, um, yeah, so you just find somebody you trust, um, that trust that knows what they're doing. Um, you know, hopefully it's not their first, first deal. Um, but at the same time, if they know what they're doing and they sound competent, um, you have to ask them the right questions. So, you know, you have to ask them, well, you know, Hey, what do I do for this? And, and if they stumble through their words, <laughs> When you ask them questions, you know you probably got the wrong guy. We all stumble uh, through our words. I stumble through my words. You're gonna. Find I'm just that a really. I'm often. A, I'm really good with words. I'm just a, a silver tongue here. That's guy. why I'm just the the side guy here. Yeah, that's why I'm the host of the podcast. I'm the side chick. There you go. Just the side <laughs> chick. So anyway, um, the other side is the biggest one is figure out where you want to live. There's freaking people that come to you. They're like, oh, I want to get pre-approved, and I'm like, I want to buy a house in Jacksonville. Okay, well. Where? Where do you want it's to It's a live? really large town, guys. Um, Jacksonville, Florida is actually the largest landmass city in the United States. So um, you can literally drive for like an hour and a half in this in this market and still be in Jacksonville. Um, and by the way, that's on a highway. That's not through like cities. Like yeah. you can be on a highway for like literally an hour and 20 minutes and still be in Jacksonville. Um, it's insane. So it's a massive city and, and every city is a little bit different, but have an idea or neighborhoods, um, that comes down to the old location, 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 but it's correct. not necessarily, you know, you can think of it in the sense of the guy living on the beach or whatever, but yeah. to that sense, drive the property, drive the neighborhood, drive the area. Maybe you love a, a certain neighborhood and you think it's going to take you, you know, 15 minutes to get to work. Well, have you ever driven that during rush hour? You yeah. know, so you gotta, you gotta know, you gotta know what you're looking for. Have you for. ever driven it, you know, eight, nine o'clock at night? It's a safe neighborhood. Yeah. Um, you know, go drive it on the big one is go drive it on the weekends. What's going go drive on? Drive it now? on a Saturday night at like seven thirty or eight o'clock. Yeah. See what kind of people are outside. See what kind so of your neighbors are. See what kind of go, see what's kind of going on. You'll get a good feel for a neighborhood yeah. on, on a weekend. You're not going to get a real good feel driving through it on a Monday evening. No. Um, but you will get it, especially if you do it during the evening time, people will be out and you'll kind of see what's going on. Um, I recommend all my buyers to drive past that property 
again in the evening time to have a look at it just to make sure oftentimes the sun comes out and it Blinds us a little bit with its light, bring, bring some, and yeah, some other creatures out. When and to moon, that sense, when the moon comes out, the creatures come out as well. No one wants to wake up extra early, you know, especially on a on a weekday when they've already woken up. But I I push the the flip side of that, and, and again, wake up first thing in a, an hour early, and you know what? Make your commute from that neighborhood in from the morning because you may That's think you're going to be closer, but what if your commute's twice as long just because the traffic? Yeah, so because your pattern that you um, might take. And the other thing I never, is, I've never thought about that. That is a really good tip, right? What if you're a? That's why you're a, the real estate investor extraordinaire. Extraordinaire. That's what they that's say. Right. Um, I don't know if they say that, but <laughs> I say that. So, who are they? Who are these <laughs> that they speak of? Uh, so, to that again, what if you're a Starbucks addict? What if you're a? You've got a shop that you you know need to pick up your favorite ice cream from, and there's Maybe. not one in sight. There's not one around. You know? Yeah, for sure. So. That's those are all the little things that. People don't generally think of if they want to be in a specific neighborhood or they fall in love with a house. But per se. And, but, and everything some, else some people isn't can, as, as Some people can by. sacrifice those things, too. Some people can, but some people can't. Correct. Yep. So all right, things well, to keep in mind. Yep. So, all right. So now we've got everything nailed down except, oh, wait, we forgot one thing. What am I going to do for a down payment? So typical lending rules have changed. Uh, with down payments over the few years, it used to be, you know, way back in the day in the 90s, early 2000s, it was pretty much you had to have 20% down um, to buy a house. That was the conventional way to do it. There was always <laughs> ways to not have 20% down, by the way. So if anybody tells you you have to have 20% down, they're lying to you. Um, right now, you can get so many different programs with as little as 1% down to 5% down. Um, I think the last few deals that I've done in the last six months have been five to 10% down. Yeah. Um, that's what we've been seeing a lot nowadays. Um, five to 10% down and still getting a prime rate by, by which means like, it's not like you're paying 5% down and you're getting a higher rate. No, they just, you're not necessarily getting the equity into your home. You're keeping your cash, um, uh, which cash is king. So I was heard that a long time ago. Cash is king. Keep your cash, having equity in your home, well, it sounds like a good idea if the market happens. If the market crashes, the market crashes, guys. It's not, I mean, it ain't happening. So, you know, the, well, the market could crash at some point. That's not what I meant. But if the market crashes, you're not going to do anything to change it. In, in $30,000 that you have into your home at equity or 40000 or 50000 that's not going to make a difference until you go to sell. Um, so if the market crashes, you haven't lost any money, guys. It's like a stock market. You know, market crashes, home values go down. You've lost no money. Um, just wait until the thing Martin thing comes back up um, and then sell it. So equity in your home, it sounds like a great idea, but keep your cash. Um, use it for other things, possibly other assets that might produce even more income. Keep in mind, uh, again, if you're not putting 20% down, you're going to have mortgage insurance. So Correct. That will add, regardless of if you're going FHA, conventional, I think the only, what's the only one you're not going to have insur- mortgage insurance on is a VA loan. VA, um, yep. So. US, Again, USDA, you still have to, which I don't do a lot of USDA loans. Yeah, th- those are more rural properties, I yep. believe, are going to yep. fall underneath the USDA style. Um, which we don't have a lot of rural properties. Yeah, I don't in the think market there's already. any in Duval. I think you have to get outside of Duval in County. Duval County? Yeah. There's probably not much left in St. John's now either. So, and there's not much left in, I mean, there's probably some in uh, Clay, but not a ton. Yeah, you're so. going to have to be on the outskirts, at least where we are. I don't know what USDA is around the country. Yeah, it could I mean, be again another one to dive if, into. If I would have done real estate where I originally grew up, which would be northern Indiana, uh, I everything probably would be very yeah. familiar with yeah. USDA loans. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so um, so once once you kind of get everything through there and you figure out your financing, your down payment stuff, um, and guys, if you have ever had any questions about any of this stuff, feel free to get a hold of us and we'll we'll give you some information on that at the end of the show. Um, but once we're gonna do that and we're we're going to skim through this stuff, but we're going to make an offer on a home. Um, what's the typical time do you think it takes for a buyer to hear something back from their offer that they put in? So I like to think anything is negotiable and all things are negotiable. I would say your standard time is going to be 24 hours. So if we're going to put an offer in today, we're going to have an expiration on that offer for some time tomorrow. And again, it's a, you don't want to put your offer out three weeks from now and no. You know, let yep. it sit there and let it, you know everybody else in the neighborhood come on and, and throw offers in into the bucket there. So, I typically like to give it at least forty eight hours. Okay, um, and and just just because I feel like 
I am an agent and I do work my butt off, but I don't work every single day of every single waking hour um, in 24 hours. And a lot of times it's not so much me. It's probably my client that yeah. can't answer it or might be doing something or needs some time to literally go over with their spouse or their significant other, or they may even need to consult a family member um, or something like that. Um, so I want to give them time to make that right decision. Um, and the more time I can give them and not necessarily that I'm trying to slow the process down, but I think sometimes people get so impatient with uh, trying to hear back from the offer, trying to hear back from the offer, trying to hear back from the offer. It's like, Hey, the other side in this market, um, lately, I like to keep myself open for about 48 hours um, as a listing agent because I want to get as many offers as I can. If you're a seller. So that's I'm where I'm going to come back and say, <laughs> if I'm look, you know what? If at, the end, buyer, at the end of the day, if, yeah, I, if exactly. I'm going to put an offer in, I want to put, you so know, find, you've got an hour to so, respond so, to me. So, 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 <laughs> so clarification, I find myself on the listing side more than I do the buyer side. Uh, so I am always a little, like hoping for 48 hours. So if you give me something as a listing agent for like six hours in response time, I'm probably going to be like, you know what? Uh, we'll wait. Just out of principle. Like, yeah, just well, just probably to, because I can get always get, I can get them to come back in 24 yeah. hours. Like I yeah, literally right. had, and I, I guess that's had the, an agent send me over send me over an offer. They sent it over to me at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. They wanted to know by seven. Yeah. They gave me four hours. I'm like, um, first of all, my client was already out of town on vacation, so I was like, I was like, all right, well, I can call them or text them and see what's going on. But I was like, dude, now I'm going to bother their vacation interrupt their family time completely with four hours, which was fine. Like I get the fact that that happens and you need to make a decision about it. But I just told the client, I said, if you're going to give us 24 hours or just take your offer back, cause I'm not going to get to it. Yeah. And she said, okay, I can give you 24 hours. Yeah. Send me an updated contract to that. You know, one of the last buyers I was working with, we had a similar situation. We had put it out actually 24 hours. Um, and, and I'll sneak that up if it's, you know, I'm putting an offer in at 7 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night. I may expire it the next day at 5. But yeah. to that sense, is that offer thrown in the trash at 5 o'clock? Well, no, not no, necessarily. Not. So and that's realistically, what people, that's if, what people don't understand. It, yeah. So if they sign it, you know, at 4.59 and it's back to you, well, it's binding at that point. But guess what? If they come back at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock or they come back 48 hours later and they say, hey, look, you know, we, we want to accept it. Well, now you have the option as the buyer to counter back. To counter back, of course. But at the end of the day, you can the offer can still go through regardless of the time period. All right. So moving forward, we got an accepted offer. Uh, we got an accepted offer within forty eight hours. Um, the buyer countered back once, and or excuse me, the seller countered back, and the buyer accepted. Um, what's the next step? The next step now. Um, where are we at with you? What's the first thing you're going to do? Um, I'm going to set up. Uh, well, one, we're going to contact the lender and let them know. Okay. And, All right. You know, yeah, you, you snuck that in on me because <laughs> um, normally I start doing inspections. Well, so. yeah, well, that that that's you know that's that's lender, right along let, there. You know, I'll let the lender know in like a day or so. Um, we got an offer, and then you start working on an offer for it. Um, at the end of the day, to me, the, you, you're going to talk to both of them at the same time, and regardless, you know. It's not like it's it takes you two days to set up lending and you know x amount of time to set up your inspections. But yeah, your inspection is the same thing. So you're going to generally have uh, your standard is going to be a ten day inspection period, and you're going to set that up. Most inspectors that, around here is they that, can. Is that inspection contingency negotiable? Everything is negotiable. That's the key that we want to reiterate. Everything so, is negotiable. So um, if you want longer, or you want to stretch that out, feel like you know, make that offer, um, yeah. or you want to close it shorter. Because most buyers are going to say, oh, shit, I can close it shorter. I oh, mean, let's go. Let's do this now. Let's yeah. do it in 20 days. The other thing we can um, throw down here at some point, maybe we can circle back on, is actually writing up a contract. So some of the things that we don't need to dive too deep into now. But since things are unnegotiable, what's going to make your offer stand out versus another offer? If you're in a competitive market, um, if it's a property you love, it just hit the market, and you know there's multiple offers going in. If you start to you know, move your offer along and make it look better by, all right, I'm not going to offer a 10-day inspection. I'm going to go down to five days, and maybe I'm not going to try to close in 45 days. I'm going to close in 30, or maybe we're going to try to close it in 25 days. Um, uh, how about contingencies on a property that you're currently trying to sell? Um, that's always going to hurt you. So in a, in a hot market, typically, if you have a contingency to sell your own home, um, and in like in our market at times, a lot of people that have a contingency to sell their own home and the offer that more likely is going to win that, that bidding war um, is the offer that does not have a contingency to where they don't have to worry about selling their house to buy their new one. Um, that's a big one lately that's happened um, where people are looking for like a, they have, if they can get a conventional, a conventional loan, 
with no contingency, man, it's 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 ball game. Let's go. Um, and they can get somewhat close to asking price or over asking price even even lately in the last couple of years here, um, which that's been Florida in general. So, um, so once we do the inspections, obviously, my favorite one with first time buyers is they want everything to be redone in the home, and that's where I just I, I literally want to take a bullet and put it through my forehead because I'm just like, guys, you if, if you wanted to buy a new home. And I have to explain this to them very, very closely. Like, guys, if you want to buy a new home, then you need to buy a new home. Um, if you want to buy a used a used home, essentially is what you're buying. Um, it's a resale. It's it's not like buying a used car per se, because a car inevitably is always going to depreciate. Real estate is going to appreciate. So that even the more that with, you do to that, with any luck. Yeah, with any luck. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it, it, we're sitting here telling you that real estate's the best thing in the world. If it doesn't appreciate, then we look like a bunch of idiots. Well, like anything else. You can't buy something and not take care of it. At the end of the day, if you buy a car and you never do an oil change and you never clean it and so on and so forth, it's going to be worth significantly less, even Clearly. though it's still depreciating. It's going to yeah. be worth much less five years from now than if you kept t- took care of it. Same thing with your house. If you purchase a property and don't do any maintenance, you're not you know keeping things clean, you're not keeping up with Correct. your roofs and your main, major mechanicals, well, guess what? So what do you so what do You, you may be losing money in the long run. Correct. So what do you tell the buyer who's like, ooh, I want to get everything done? And we're talking like light switch covers and some of these ridiculous things. That to me, like, this this comes through where having an experienced agent uh, that knows what to look for in a property, like anything else, you're not going to want to nitpick everything out. You're going to walk through a property and see, uh, you know, even a brand new build is going to have issues that are going to come up onto an, on an inspection report. Yeah, they just have to so, fix them before they close. To like, me, I'm going to say you got to knock out your, your must, you know, break it into categories, you, you know, needs to be accounted for regardless. Sometimes your lending is going to have, you know, certain, yeah, certain sure. requirements. So WDO work, which is wood destroying organisms, so any kind of like rotting wood needs to absolutely be handled for a lot of loans, especially FHA, um, conventional, depending on the lender, they may make you fix it or not. Um, so VA, I, I would they, break they, it. They, VA, they absolutely. Yeah, VA, you 100% need to have that taken care of. So to me, you need, need to break it out into like needs to be addressed, um, would like to be addressed, and okay, Bonus. realistically, you can Bonus. yeah, you can <laughs> you can fix these yourself for $15. Yeah, exactly. um, we're not going like to you buy, push When you buy out. a house, you're going to have to do, you're going to have to spend some money to redo some of the little small things that the buyer or the seller probably just is like, Eh, whatever. I'm not going to do it right now. And um, and it really comes down to at the end of the day, I want to, you know, maybe you want to, you want them to fix the blinds or fix whatever. Well, they're going to put up a, the cheapest blinds that they can get because they don't have to put what you want in there. They me, just needs to, they need to need to fix my it. The most important point of the conversations about trying to negotiate repairs is ask for a dollar amount. Yes. Um, so I love I'd that. Go in there grab, you know, 24 things off the inspection or five things, whatever. Which it comes is. down to the Ask for your necessities. So if you need the WDO fixed or you need a roof done because that's the only way you're going to get lending approval, you need to ask for those. Everything else, Correct. group into, group to your into, point, group them yeah. into a dollar figure. And whether it's, whether it's you know, I've done ones where, where it was 300 bucks, whether it was $2,000, whatever. Uh, we had one that was 3,500 bucks because yeah. we had to replace um, the handler. They didn't want to do it. And I said, guys, it's... We'll just we'll just ask for a credit because they're probably going to put in the cheapest air handler in the world, and we got thirty five hundred bucks towards it. And he knew an AC guy that could give him a discount, so he said, "Hey, let's take the quote unquote cost of the new AC." Well, we not only did we do the the handler and the condenser, we did the inside and the outside unit all at the same time for like forty two hundred dollars. Um, so we got a really really good deal on a new AC system for him. And they really paid for most of it, even yeah. though the handler was quoted at thirty five hundred bucks. Um, so if the uh, seller's listening to this for my buyer, they're probably going to be upset that I told them that. But um, we're not going to talk about which which deal that was. But um, that's the that's taking care of your own clients and knowing how to work things. Um, so once the repairs are done um, and you go through it, obviously you're going to do a walkthrough inspection um, with your agent to make sure that all those repairs are done. Um, once the repairs are done and you guys have negotiated repairs, you've negotiated, obviously, your uh, purchase amount on the property, you're pretty darn close. Um, we're going to make sure that the loan is going to get approved um, at the end, which will be after those. Um, and the last thing they really really got to worry about is the appraisal. Um, 
Can you give us, Ryan Robbins, a really, really good four-second explanation on what an appraisal is? In four seconds. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, no. In four give me, give me, words. Give me, so give me like essentially, seconds. the, give me the an, an appraisal is version. the bank's reassurance or confirmation that your home is worth what they're lending on. Correct. That's what it comes that's, down that's to. That's pretty, pretty good. So, yeah. So, obviously, the bank is going to take a look at this property and say, hey, the chances of – is it actually va- – what it's valued at and what it's worth are two different things. So, the value is obviously what it gets on the market. And what it's worth to the bank is um, obviously what they think it's worth if you were to foreclose on it. Could they sell it for that amount of money um, for, for the most part? That's a, that's a roundabout way of putting it. But, uh, hey, your loan's approved. It's closing day. We're ready to go. Um, what's the, what's the, what, what, what do we wake up on closing day and do? Dance? Is that that's dance, the first dance, thing dance I'm doing? Works. <laughs> dance works. I was thinking, um, uh, final walkthrough real quick. Walk through the house. Yeah, make so sure that everything is, uh, cleaned out. Walkthroughs. Yeah. We can generally do those day of, if, if we can schedule them, uh, to me, it, if the property's vacant, you know, I'm scheduling it slightly differently than if somebody's moving out and sometimes your seller is literally moving out and finishing pulling their stuff out the last, you know, the morning of when your closing is in the afternoon. So in that sense, you want to go by, you want to make sure they're not, you know, having ding doors, you know, walls broke, 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 yeah, broken, a, you know, glass, exactly. Uh, taking, you know, taking a couch out. Crap out of the wall. Most, what, one thing I look for is just making sure they get everything out of the property. Yeah. And they tried to clean it a little bit. That helps. Have you, have you ever had somebody yeah. that you show up and do a walkthrough and it's like, Hey, the washer dryer was on the contract supposed to stay. Where is and it? It's and not it's there. And a big oopsie. So or the appliances, like yeah. they take the appliances. Yeah. Like what? Well, then so. you walk into close it, walk into closing with your Conor McGregor swag on. <laughs> okay, and you go, I'd like my washer and dryer to be here, and they're not. Um, so that, now we get to go into closing. Well, I'm not signing that paperwork until I have something signed about money that's going to be transferred from the buyer or from the seller to the buyer. And look, um, there's people that truly just blank and they end up walking out with the refrigerator they and they just had no idea. They, 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 but then there's oh, other people that, up, that right? try to pull a fast one. But that's the whole point of a walkthrough is, yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't happen often. Stuff's going to happen. And it has it, happened. It, yeah. So, exactly. yep. all right, well, that pretty much um, wraps it up. So once you buy your house, move in, have a freaking party, throw a housewarming party. And invite us. And please. invite us. Invite us all. We like... Uh, we like beverages, and I'm a big fan of pizza. Um, oh. So, um, you know, pizza and suds always does it for me. So, uh, and by suds, I mean cold adult beverages. So, I'm with you. All right, man. Well, how do how do these guys reach you? Uh, they can uh, they can check me out, uh, jacksproperypros.com. They can also check us out, uh, no BS Real Estate Podcast.com. No BS real estate podcast.com. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but we are trying to, we're going to, we're going to shrink that down here and that uh, town a little bit once we can, uh, get this thing rolling, but you can find me at nine Oh four rents.com. Um, I do residential property management. I also do sales. Um, and that's Maddie Actually, a lot of the points out of this article were found on uh, my blog at Maddie sales.com. Uh, take a look at that. We'll post that in the show notes as well. Uh, if you have any questions for me get in touch with me, um, Matthew.Miller at ERA.com uh, That's my email if you have any questions there And uh, my cell phone actually went out earlier on the show, I think um, Or maybe that was a maybe that was a, a rough draft earlier <laughs> So, anyway we'll um, Either way, try to get in touch with me there um, And we hope you guys enjoy the day Any big weekend plans for you, my man? Oh, what do I have going on? I'm doing some house around the work. Uh, house around the work. Work house around the, the work, house man. around the work. Work house around the around house. The there we go. Um, and yeah, probably uh, taking a dip in the pool. Yeah. So I got. Uh, I think Saturday there's some good college football on, and uh, Sunday I'll be going to the Jags game. There you go. So if you want to get in touch with me on Sunday, good luck. I'll be watching the Jaguars uh, probably get the crap kicked out of them again. Um, or they better get their get their crap straight. So they're gonna get something going here. All right. Well, thanks for joining us for episode one, guys. Hey, we'll see you soon. And ladies and gentlemen, always remember, as our great president FDR once said, real estate cannot be lost or stolen, nor can it be carried away. Purchased with common sense, paid for in full, and managed with reasonable care, it is about the safest investment in the world. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not bullshit. Have a great day, guys. Oh,